Hey guys, it's Bub here, and in this video we're taking a look at Atom OS 10 22H2 Lite. A viewer recommended this to me in the comments in my previous video, so I'm taking a look at it. This mod is less than a week old at this point, it's a relatively new mod. The team at Atom OS really was committed to making an updated build of this, so I'm very eager to take a look at this and see what it's like. And is it comparable to Tiny 10? The reason we're taking a look at Atom OS 10 and not Atom OS 11, because there is a version 11 because this one actually it had less disk space required than the new version did. So I wanted to take a look at something that is ultimately really comparable to Windows, to Tiny 10 and Tiny 11. So this is new. Instead of booting into an installer, it looks like you booted into like a Linux. It's obviously not Linux, but in this instance, Windows PE, but I like to think of it as like a Windows, as like a Linux live environment. Um, but the installer just opened up. So we're going to click my language is English. Next and install and then it goes full screen but we can still access that live start button there um, we don't have a product key and we're going to accept the terms and conditions and click next custom and install on the disk um, while that's installing I do want to look at this sort of custom I don't know what this is called Windows PE um, so it does create it looks like a 96 meg RAM disk um, nothing too major here um, I don't know what boot is because I, this is the virtual drive I created. I have no idea what boot is, but hey. Um, it also comes with a bunch of tools as we saw like login unlocker, snapshot mem test, backup suite, crystal disk, CPU Z, partition assistant, and command prompt. So this could be very useful if you have to end up recovering a computer. Um, but we are installing this OS, and once we're back in the out of box experience of the desktop, we're gonna go ahead and restart right now. That was pretty quick. All right, and here we are in the desktop of Project Atom OS 10. Um, as we can see, I actually really do like this background. It's nice and clean. It's a play on what we get in Windows 11, um, but we can see the purple pink hues here. This I actually like this font. I want to find out what font this is. Um, it's very clean, very nice, um, and nothing at all like what we see with some of the bloatware ISOs that we've taken a look at in the past. On the desktop, by default, we have our recycle bin, which has, I'm a little confused because this is all Windows 11 icons, and that's also a Windows 11 icon. Um, maybe they just updated the icons to Windows 10. Um, and then we also have this post install, which is set to run, oh, it's just a folder, okay. So in the start menu folder, we have start menu customizations, or no, this is just the starting point, not start menu, my bad. Uh, we have tweaks, tools, so various tools that are in this OS, reverts, so you can revert certain things or run, they're all batch files pretty much. Um, we then have essentials, so if you want to install any browsers, they're in here. Um, and then media and branding, so here's all the wallpapers, and these are actually some pretty nice wallpapers um, that come pre-included. And also some different mouse cursors, because if you haven't noticed, our mouse cursor kind of looks like, it reminds me of a Linux cursor, like something that's based on Arch. Let's go ahead and close out a file explorer and start exploring this operating system. So down here on the right side of the taskbar, we have our show desktop button. We have our system calendar and our system time. We have our speakers, or our volume control rather, um, which probably, yep, standard Windows 10 sound. We then have our network settings, which, you know, pretty standard for Windows 10. And we have our system tray, which is only running the VMware tools that I installed, as well as we have Bluetooth, and then we have the safely remove hardware and eject media. Over on the left side of the start menu, we have the start menu itself, and then we have our file explorer shortcut. So not too much here. Um, while we're in file explorer, I do want to point out here that our ISO is 1.9 gigabytes, so not too bad. Going ahead and opening up the start menu, we can see that by default there's no apps actually pinned, so there's no tiles, it's just the regular kind of the app menu in the start menu. I'm saying menu a lot here. Um, here we have settings, Windows accessories, which is literally only notepad, Windows administrative tools, which is your traditional administrative tools, we have PowerShell, and then we have Windows system, which is command prompt, control panel, file explorer, run, task manager, this PC, and Windows administrative tools. So we are really cut down with what's in this operating system, which is insane that they were able to cut this down this much. I even, I want to say Tiny 10 doesn't even come with, you know, it comes with a little more than this. Let's go ahead and open settings here and take a look at what we can see. So if we go to start menu about, we can see that this is Windows 10 Pro 22H2, so the latest version. 
that specific OS build. I'm not exactly sure how up to date we are in patches. So let's go ahead into update and it looks like they actually did disable Windows Update so you cannot update Windows 10 to the latest security patches um, just the way it is right now. Now maybe in post install there was something that let you enable Windows Update maybe I'm not entirely sure I'm not going to take a look through it um, but regardless um, there should be a way to re-enable Windows Update but again that could risk breaking things especially with uh, so much of the operating system just being missing Let's go back in the start menu and take a look at our task manager. That is not where I wanted to go, but this is where another place I wanted to take a look. Um, instead of going to task manager, let's take a look at our disk usage. So we have a 60 gig disk in this VMware machine, um, and we're using 7.58 gigabytes. Now there is a command that we could run that would compress this disk even more, which would make this number even smaller. But by default, out of the box, with VMware tools, we're at 7.58 gigabytes, which means we have 52.2 gigs free not bad. Now we can go to task manager which is what I intended to do originally and if we go to performance we can see that we're using typical Windows CPU utilization uh, hovering from 0 to 3 percent. Um, the memory usage we're using about 900 megs out of 2 gigs in this VM. I usually give my VMs way more RAM than this but because this was a light operating system I really wanted to see you know how light is it really? Um, and we're only using 907 megs, so in the very low 900s even, which is very good. We're looking at Windows 10, not Windows 11. Windows 11 would be much worse than this. I know we did see some backgrounds, but they are not in settings by default. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at some of these backgrounds if I'm able to figure out where I put them. Yep, they're in here. Um, we have this one, which we took a look at earlier in the video. We have that one. That one, I like that one. I like these colors. Um, we have the one that I believe this is what's actually set currently. Yep. And then we have this one, which is the same color scheme. It's just the ribbons are on the left side instead of on the bottom. And like I said, by default, there is no web browser installed, but that's the nice thing about having a post install. Tiny10, Tiny11 don't have post install folders, which is probably in its own way a good thing because it's less bloat included. But the one thing I wish that would come with Tiny10 and Tiny11, especially if you're installing it on new hardware, is the ability to either, maybe not install a web browser, but to have an installer on the desktop. Because I know when I used to do videos where I would put Tiny10 and Tiny11 on real hardware, it was a big pain to actually get, um, it was a big pain to actually get Chrome or Edge over onto the machine. Because at the time I was using a very weird proprietary machine and the U there had to be USB drivers installed. Uh, for Windows to recognize the USB. Um, so this OS, like I said, does have, I believe it's under Essentials, yep, um, does have installers that are not up to date. Um, these were modified in 2023, so they are in no way modern browsers, um, but they are still, they'll probably self-update once you actually install them. And so that being said, this was a very brief overview of Project Atom. Definitely let me know what you think down in the comments below, and if you have any other operating systems that you wanted me to take a look at, please let me know. I always love doing viewer recommended video ideas. With that being said, make sure to drop a like if you like this video, subscribe if you're new and here, as I do all kinds of different technology videos, including device restorations. With that being said, I'll see you all in the next one.